Good evening, YouTube. This is a tutorial video on how, how to replace failing parking sensors on a uh, 2000 to 2005 Ford Excursion. Uh, this example is a 2001. And uh, what you're going to see when you turn it on, when you see the parking uh, light, when you put it in reverse, it stays off. So you can try to turn it off. It just that uh, that indicates that there's a fault in the system, and so we're going to go through and diagnose how to di well how to diagnose and how to repair it. So what I've done here is I'm leaving it in accessory on mode. So it's pretty much like as far up as it goes, except for starting it. And make sure that your battery is connected to a tender or something here because at least with a diesel like this, it's gonna leave the glow plugs running for at least two minutes, so it'll kill your battery. Uh, so the point of this is you need to make sure that the parking brake is set, make sure you're on level ground, and we're gonna go back to the back of the vehicle and listen to the sensors. So you, this is imperative that the vehicle is not running and that you have a quiet area where you can listen to these sensors. Okay, so what we have here, uh, the vehicle is in reverse, it's on, on run mode except for it's not it's not actually running so you're gonna want to get very close to these sensors put your ear up the phone won't pick this noise up and you're gonna you're gonna hear a clicking noise and you can see just by the difference that one of these sensors has been replaced before at least one so go by each one and see if you hear a clicking and mark which ones don't click and they're obviously bad I'm gonna put the microphone right up to the uh, right up to the sensor and see if you can hear that. I'm gonna try to put the microphone right up to the sensor and see if you can hear the clicking. It's sort of a click 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 click. That's what you're listening for. And you can see my wonderful little helper. The replacement sensors, the uh, the dealer wants about $150 each, so you're like $600, and uh, they charge two hours of labor, uh, half an hour each, to replace these at $100 an hour or what have you. So you're looking at like $800 at the dealer to get these replaced. Uh, got these off of eBay. They're about $35 for all four, and there's the part number. They are specific to the excursion. There's other ones that look very similar. Dorman makes some that are about $30 a piece. They're good too. Uh, but, you know, these are very basic in what they do. So as long as they work, you know, you're good. And if they don't, you can buy these several times and still be money ahead. Uh, so we'll get into the actual re replacement. Okay, so you get behind the bumper, and that's what you're going to see. And I have a hitch, so the others may a little, be a little tougher to show. And so there's a clip on each side. You're going to have to use a flat-headed screwdriver to get to, and as well as disconnecting the harness on each side. We'll get into that here. Okay, in something to note very quickly is uh, I like to put some dielectric grease in there. These things were shipped dry just to keep any moisture or anything out there and uh, we'll proceed and we're at the final sensor and I wanted to point to you here you see this clip right here some of them if they've been replaced before they're loose but all you're gonna do is kinda pry and hold that and there's one more on the top as well and you wanna keep some pressure on the on the outside oh yeah hi Lamborghini uh, you want to keep some pressure on the back side so you can push them inward. So here we have the two clips are loose and so you push it from the back side and it'll come out. And so that gives you your sensor and there is there's a clip right there. Thank you CC. Thank you my helper. There's a clip, you're going to push that and it'll slide right out. Okay, so we have all four, 
we have all four sensors replaced, and uh, we knew just from listening to these that there was one bad one, uh, but we went, we went ahead and replaced all of them and just keep the others as spares. So we'll go up front and put it back in accessory mode, and let's see what happens. So now the vehicle is uh, started in accessory mode, put it in reverse. You notice that the off light is, now it turns on and off as you would. And let's go back here. Hi, Sissy. You should get close to him and you should hear it. Let's see. So I think we're back in business. I will show you one more thing if there is an issue still. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can get your the, uh, issue resolved. The other common issue is the rear backup speaker. And there's the part number. And this is a this is a genuine OEM Ford part. Uh, it's about fifteen dollars. And so what you're looking at, this is the this is the part, and it's a really poor design. It involves these two clips staying together in order to make make up the socket. And it uh, it'll get moisture in there. It'll fail. Do a uh, yep. CC's helping me with the light here. Um, Uh, anyway, so the speaker will fail and it will, since, since it has to get 12 volts at that uh, sensor, at the, at the connector, uh, if it doesn't get 12 volts, it will cause the system to fail. So what you're looking at, in order to have access to it, there's this panel here and there's four clips. One, two, it, it, you can't see it from here. There's one, two, three, four across here. And all you're going to do is grab up behind it and pull it down. And that will give you access to this panel. And there are one, two pressure clips. And then there's a Velcro clip up here. And it's actually slid in this way. So you're going to pull it out. And that will give you access to the speaker. And it's plastic riveted in with two rivets. And the connector and the speaker is right there. Um, all I, I use sheet metal screws to reattach it with some rubber grommets on it just so it doesn't rattle around and uh, I went ahead and replaced that uh, because I thought that was my cause that was a cheaper option versus uh, replacing all of the backup sensors so between the two that got us back in business so now we're good to go